Um, so we are really excited to be uh, transported to Romania this evening. And um, we're going to be trying the Balagaza wines. Um, and Geza is here himself to talk us through those. So that will be fantastic. My, um, his English isn't perfect and Amelia and I speak quite quickly. So we're going to try and slow down. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when we get excited, we go super fast. So we'll try and slow down and take a breath. Um, we're also joined by Darius, who is a winemaker at another uh, winery called Prama Jelna, I believe. Um, and I think both of these guys uh, lecture in Romania as well on, on wine. So, you know, they, they know a lot of stuff. So we're really blessed to have them in our company. And then we are joined by the wonderful Ben, uh, who is a wine buyer at Novel Wines. And so he is, um, you know, all clued up on all of these uh, fantastic wines from Romania but also from other parts of the world as well that you know much more unusual varieties and talking of varieties I still haven't figured out how to pronounce these names except Kadaka I think <laughs> I could do that one <laughs> so, yeah um, I can do Krampusi I can do Krampusi <laughs> I just about got Fatiasca Niagara, but that's not, it's the same grape that we've got as the third wine tonight, but it's, it, it, it's apparently it's a Hungarian Romanian difference, um, which yes. we'll talk us through um, later on. Um, yeah, so welcome to everybody who's joined us again. We've seen, I've got some lovely uh, familiar names up there. So welcome, thank you for coming back. For those of you who are new to our sessions, um, welcome and hopefully you've uh, got the wines to try with us tonight. We do advocate responsible drinking. So although we are encouraging you to taste all three this evening, um, please don't drink more than you would normally drink. Um, we We'll be going through the three wines, but also talking more generally about Romania, the native grape varieties, and also how to buy these wines, um, either in shops or, you know, in restaurants or trying something new. So that's kind of what we're about this evening. And uh, yeah, I'll be taking us uh, across all the different people. Um, we have a chat box. So anyone that's new, that's not seen it before, there's a chat box. If you hover, you should be able to find that. And we yeah. will be reading that as we go through. Um, it, goes, it goes quite fast sometimes. Um, so if there are particular questions that you want to ask, please put them in the Q&A box because I'll make sure that all of those are answered before the end. Um, yeah, and I think that's all the, all the, normal, the normal things. Um, so the first uh, instance, I want to go over to Geza to tell us a little bit about the Balageza brand. And the thing that I'm most interested in is the beautiful wrapping of the bottles. That's what caught my eye initially. So, yeah, please tell us about um, Balageza and why you wrap the bottle. So, so thank you. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to, to, to um, see you. Uh, may I introduce uh, you in, in, in our wine worlds, in our wine region and our winery. So uh, in the Minich wine region, in Balagueza winery. So, and thank you, thank you very much uh, again for your invitation. So uh, um, about uh, my winery, I want to tell you our, about the, our family winery um, was, was uh, uh, founded uh, 20 years ago uh, and, and uh, in, in uh, Minish wine region. Minish wine is the most popular and, and, and the historical wine region, it's the old wine region. And uh, I think after uh, 20 years of uh, existence, uh, we should proudly declare that we have a success. Uh, so, we apprised the famous uh, on time Kadarka, the indigenous uh, Fetesca Negra, the regional Mustasa de Madarat, 
on forming grape varieties. So, and we can offer um, different style of wine selection made by local on the, on the um, international grapes, uh, which was the uh, infrequent uh, of the terroir on the, on the uh, our unique winemaking style based on a minimal intervention uh, on the mine personal winemaking style. I want to tell you about uh, the, 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 our style. It's most important because, because uh, uh, I told you about the minimal intervention. That means I, I, I don't prepare the uh, so biological bio wines, but uh, for me, the minimal intervention uh, uh, on a wine is very, very important, very important. So uh, about the wine region, about the Minish wine region, you have to you have to know uh, it's the most popular uh, wine region. How how I I told you, historical wine region. We have excellent condition, excellent soil, and and climate condition to obtain a high quality of the red wine. Uh, how I told you the in, indigenous uh, the local varieties like Kadarka, like Fatasca Negra, uh, or or. Uh, so white wine like mustasa, uh, like like furmint, uh, I have uh, 120 hectares of the vineyards. 80 uh, percent, 80 percent, I have with uh, with uh, uh, red varieties for red wine, and uh, uh, only 20 percent uh, uh, white varieties for white wines. So and we have we have a, a typical, we have a, a, a special style. Uh, to to making wine, and and uh, I'm I'm uh, so happy for this question, because I want to show for 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 uh, uh, everybody for the peoples who like my wines, the typicity of our wines, the the typicity or or uh, our wine region, and and uh, uh, the typicity the the wine making and and uh, uh, don't forget please the typicity for wine packaging. This our special packaging method, uh -huh. and and what means this packaging method? I uh, with with uh, uh, twenty years ago, I considered if you want to buy one bottle with with uh, Balagesa wine, if you want to to give, uh, if you want if you want to offer this wine for one gift, okay, it's packaging, but it's most important the quality of the wine must be very very nice. So this is my philosophy uh, uh, in this question, in this packaging method. Beautiful. Every, every wine is a gift. I love that. I absolutely yes, love that. yes, 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 yes. Um, I've just been, I've just uh, read that we have a question for, um, do we have any map or image to help everyone identify where we are? So I've just managed to find one. Can you? <laughs> so Minis is by Arid. Do you see is Arid? Is that a bad um, map? Okay. No, no, it's good. So, so you see Arid in the west. Minis yes, is, yes, yes. You can, you can, you can observe. You can observe uh, our wine region Arad near the Arad. Uh, um, not, not. Not not far away from the Hungarian border, Arad. Uh, it's the most most popular region, uh, if you know. But uh, the Minish uh, Minish, how I told you, it's a historical and and uh, most famous wine wine region, Minish. Minish uh, in Romanian language and international language, or Minesh, Hungarian language. Okay. So we're just so so we're just about there. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, yes. <laughs> um, do you, or would you like to talk us through um, the tasting notes for the white? So we've got this amazingly beautiful white wine, which um, we uh -huh. sort of as if they like Roussan, which I am a massive fan mm -hmm. of. Roussan. That um, that they'll like this wine, and I do like this wine. So yeah, would you would you like to do that? 
Yo, if you have, uh, <laughs> yo, yo, okay. If you have uh, uh, this wine in your glasses, I want to show you. I, I, I want to uh, tell something about this wine. The name is is uh, uh, Tatesca Regale in Romanian uh, language or uh, Kirai Lanka in Hungarian. Uh, the Royal Maiden. It's the most important, the most popular uh, um, native variety. Uh, this uh, this uh, this variety is uh, is uh, originated uh, from the uh, Ternava Valley, from the Central Transylvania regions. Uh, I think Darius know uh, yeah, very well. <laughs> who is who is um, and where is this uh, this area? Uh, and uh, this wine has an aromatic uh, uh, complexity, uh, a bit fresh garden fruit. Uh, stone fruit, uh, um, wild flowers, and a um, hint of tropical fruit aromas. Due to the Mediterranean climate, uh, it is one easy drinking, refreshing wine. Uh, normal bit of uh, feminine uh, delicacy. <laughs> when you talk about your wines um, having a certain typicity, what are the characteristics people should be looking for? From yes, uh, this, wine um, and the terroir? this wine was fermented in a, a, a stainless steel, a low temperature. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, it's uh, most important to know uh, because uh, the, the, the low temperature, we, we can observe the one, one um, uh, primary, uh, very, very nice uh, uh, and, and, and freshness, a very nice taste and very nice uh, smell and, and, uh, and uh, fruity aromas and, and uh, um, of these uh, outsiding varieties. On on um, on the palate, you can observe. We can observe um, not a high alcohol, uh, very nice acidity. Um, around at six uh, gram per liters. This is a it's a um, two point six uh, three grams per liter sugar. It's a it's a. Um, not not uh, too much sugar, I think. And and uh, um, on a on a palate also um, uh, very nice freshness. And and uh, what we can feel on the nose, uh, we can observe same and and similarly on our palate. I think I think uh, this is a complex, very nice complex wine, uh, uh, very nice aroma, very nice uh, taste and. How I told you, uh, fresh and 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 uh, uh, reductive type of the of, of uh, wine. Yeah, it is. And with the with the because um, it, it, it often like people get confused and they'll think a wine is sweet when it's actually just really fruity. Has this one got quite a lot of residual sugar, or is it just that really fruity style? Yes, yes, it's a fruity wine. Uh, for me, it's most important. It's very, very important to be a fruity wine. To be to to observe the, uh, a little bit uh, flower, um, uh, white flower aromas, um, and 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 uh, uh, without sugar. Uh, a lot of people prefer this wine with uh, um, a little bit less sugar, more than five and six uh, grams. But I think if if you want to drink uh, one one one. Uh, um, Good and and very nice uh, fresh wine, uh, very nice uh, fresh flowers and wine flowers, typical wine flowers uh, in our nose. Not necessary to be to be uh, with with less sugar. Okay. Not necessary right. to be sweet and demi sweet wine. This uh, this uh, 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 without sugar. This is a sec. What this would a you dry wine. What would you How serve could I it with? This a dry wine? What kind of food would you serve it with? What would be a mm -hmm. local dish? Yes, this, uh, this is a uh, um, a little bit, a little bit uh, um, vegetable salts. Mm -hmm. 
with with um, um, uh, citron rice, wine grates, and uh, grilled uh, chickens. Yeah. Grilled chickens, uh, fish. I think uh, is excellent. But uh, uh, grilled chickens, excellent. Uh, this wine after a very nice grilled chickens. I think. Oh, that sounds like my kind of wine. It is. You it is your kind of wine. I can I can offer you. I can offer you, and I can offer for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Do you export your wine to the states? Could I get it in America? Uh, in America, no. Uh, I, I will starting now to exporting in America, but uh, in this moment, I have not uh, this white wine in America. I told you I have I have um, um, not more than twenty percent white wine in uh, in mm -hmm. my region. I am I am uh, I am uh, uh, um, so. The people who know me, uh, they know uh, me. Uh, uh, Maybe I am not a famous winemaker, not a not a not a famous uh, uh, wine producer, but a lot of people like my wines, but not for white wines. Uh, also, we have a, a little bit very nice white wines, but um, I am approved for 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 uh, 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 my red wines. Um, in 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 uh, in. Uh, uh, United States, I have not uh, um, Regala, um, but but maybe in the future. I have five point uh, yes five point five hectares. I make I can make in in, uh, um, in each year uh, three so thirty thousand bottles. Okay, thirty thousand bottles. So we're natural, pretty lucky natural, to have them in natural the natural condition, yeah. natural condition, natural and typical natural and wine. America can have some if uh, we don't drink it. <laughs> oh, you have, but, but you have, you have, you have Fatasca, uh in, in in your glasses or water. What happened? Uh, I, yeah. I got I got both. <laughs> I, got it. I, mean, I was just having a glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed, Ben. Not allowed. Why only? <laughs> So my friends, if you have not, I can offer a little bit uh, Fedesca, <laughs> Fedesca Regala for you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's fascinating hearing about, um, you know, you're not exporting to the States because there's just not enough of it. And to be fair, we don't have a lot of it in the UK either. I mean, Darius, do you have some views on kind of, you know, how 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 do you guys see the uk as a market like are we are we in favor do you want to be exporting to the uk is it something we're going to see more of well this is quite an interesting question let's just put it this way i mean it's definitely a very exciting market every time i've been to the uk like i've, I've ate very good food very nice net restaurants very good um service and i get I don't know. I, I've, I've seen lots of uh, new world wines, of course, uh, some French selections, but I'm, I think we need a very, I, I think we need a better marketing for Romanian wines in, uh, in England. I mean, I, if, I, if I would be an Englishman, I, I wouldn't buy necessarily Romanian wine if I wouldn't know anything about it, unless I would be a very passionate uh, guy about wine. So I think there's uh, an opportunity for us there. It could be but we really need to be able to talk better. I mean, to express what we have better and with, with more pride. I mean, Bola Gezo is a very good example of, of what I'm saying right now. He, he has always done it in the last 20 years, as he, as he said, proudly. And uh, we, on the other way, we're a very young, vibrant seller. I mean, we've just started a few years ago and we're smashing already. We have Canada, some uh, Belgium, some um, Denmark, Germany, but it depends on the type of seller. I wouldn't export, uh, I mean, I, I've sent some wine in the UK, in the Manchester area, but the price will always be, I mean, you guys have some import fees and stuff like that. So why not, I, because I don't want to sell my wine cheaper than I sell it here. Mm -hmm. So unless you guys are willing to offer the same price and you can see the quality, I mean, we, I'm gladly putting it with other wines that are the same shelf um, price. But again, it has to, you just, we need more time and we need more um, people that are able to communicate 
and uh, that are really keen to going there and exploring and just seeing and see what's it, what, what's it all about. I mean, we have really nice uh, Romanian varieties, as Paolo said. I mean, Regala, the Fitasca Regala is huge, the, the Royal Main. It's a really, really interesting variety. I mean, I have one that I need to sell it three years, just stainless steel um, um, wine mate. Uh, before releasing it on the market. I mean, the acidity is huge, at least on my terroir, which is a really cold one. So, yeah, it's really exciting. And um, I think we need to make a better name for Romania in general and for Romanian and Transylvanian wines. Yeah, we just need to do it better. I, don't, I think it's a good market. And um, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it sounds, like, it sounds like we need to create, I say we, we need, a bridge. we need to create more demand because when there's more demand you can ask for higher prices and then it's worth you exporting yeah. it i mean ben how have you found it bringing it bringing in romanian wines is are your customers receptive i mean they're, they're mostly people who explore wines anyway aren't they yeah i mean like last time we we're quite lucky with novel wines that our customers love tasting outside of the box um but one big thing that struck us and, and Belagaza's wines are one of our success stories. We sell uh, a lot of his wine um, in, in kind of uh, comparison to the rest of our list. And it was because uh, the Fetasca Niagara or Faketa Lianica um, is quite similar to Shiraz, which is an obviously much loved grape and is quite similar. Um, we always try and buy for the UK palate and the uh, Fichetta Leonica had that lovely bit of spice, loads of fruit, really yeah. soft and silky. It's medium to full bodied. It's not too full bodied and jammy that you start thinking it's too rich. And I don't want to foreshadow what's coming, but it was that wine that kind of made us go or made George go because George bought the wine in. Um, but this would be a real success here in the UK. And as soon as you've got that flagship wine, you know, one wine on the list, um, people can taste it and love it. And then they start exploring Kadaka as an alternative to Pinot Noir and uh, Kiralianica or Fatasca Regala as a alternative to Roussan or Viognier or whatever. Um, but you need that kind of flagship to go, look, here's Romania making outstanding wines. Um, e even what we char charge for the bottle, twelve ninety nine a bottle, it's exceptionally good value. So much of the Romanian wine in the UK is sold cheaply which is a shame um but then also one of the big success stories of romania in the uk is um good value pinot noir as an alternative to some That's of the true. stuff out there as well yeah. it, um, it only really takes a few wines to to convert the market and if you look at the uk last 20 30 years we jumped on south african wine and it blew up we did it with australian wine and it blew up you know, we're, we're quite a um, diverse wine drinking culture, like the States are. Um, and you can find a whole range of really interesting, amazing wines. And it only takes a few people who really put the effort into the market to turn it into a massive success story. So hopefully Novel Wines is a small part of that journey as well. That'd be great. <laughs> hopefully we are too, because, you, exactly. you know, I think... Um, I think the first time I tried a Romanian wine was at a Lathwaite show years ago and it was the Fetiasca Niagara and I was like oh this is like Shiraz it's amazing and I guess that kind of it's like it's like this helps people get into it and what I love about the UK wine drinking public well some of them not all of them is their um, Explore, explorative nature of like I want to try something else because I get a lot of questions and I have when I've done my pop-up wine bars um, a lot of questions of oh I like this what else can I try that I'll like and so that kind of connection of if you like this you'll like that. No, and I, th I think that's what helps too with the UK only just recently <laughs> having uh, their own domestic vineyards and wine making culture because in america i would say people aren't so open-minded because they're used to you know 90 percent of what they produce they consume domestically so i find it a bit of a push even with what i would consider fairly mainstream like greek wine or whatever you know fairly wines which have been accepted and really embraced in the uk 
it's it's harder in the US. So that as that being said, when I did my Instagram live yesterday, the people who do tune into my Instagram lives, they were all interested and they were like, where can we find interesting wines? Yes, we're, we're willing to pay $15, $20, you know, for you know, good quality stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna, I was meant to do a roundup for them. So I am going to be doing that. I'll, I'll be doing my bit and staying away from the, the, the bottles, which are about $4 and have Dracula on them. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, I really think that, you know, that kind of, I, Transylvania to me it's not about you know Dracula and the you know potential comedy of that but it's the name like the kind of mysteriousness I mean that that attracts me but mm. yeah not not Dracula yeah, no, I guess there's a kind of like romance yeah. gothic, gothic romance. romance yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah and all those people <laughs> going to fight yeah very nice romance yeah um, shall we move on to the next one? Um, Gaisa, would you like to talk us through the tasting notes for the Kadarka, please? So, Kadarka. So the next one and the first uh, red wine for today is a Kadarka. Kadarka from Minish. So, it's a very, very popular and very, very important varieties in our wine region in Minish. And uh, I, I, I want to I want to tell you about about these writers. Um, we cannot talk about the the Minish uh, without uh, without these uh, uh, great varieties. And uh, this uh, famous Kadarka uh, from Minish, um, dating back over uh, um, three hundred years. Uh, this is a this is a um, there are elegant uh, signature of great varieties. And uh, maybe you know, uh, uh, called also the the Balkans Pinot Noir, and and uh, it's carried through the whole impression of the wine uh, from the from the pleasant, uh, ruby red color on on the appearance uh, on the plate, uh, um, on the palate and on the palate uh, and and um, uh, um, this wine. Uh, displays exceptional generosity and, and, and purity um, of fruit, but is not uh, a type that overhangs. What, what can you, what can you talking a little bit more about these varieties? Uh, I think you know about the, the, the spicy foods in the Hungarian kitchen. I think you know and everybody know about the, the, the uh, goulash, Hungarian goulash. Yeah. Everybody know about the, the, the fish goulash from Hungary. And uh, chicken. Food? Yes. Was <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> um, preparing with, with a little bit, uh, these this foods, a little bit spicy foods. And, uh, and uh, the kadarka, uh, you, we can observe in, in, in taste, uh, a little bit spicy. Uh, 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 type uh, um, characteristic. So, if uh, if uh, we are we are talking about uh, the the, the um, tasting note, this is a fresh wine, friend, fresh, a very friendly and fruity, uh, and and uh, red on 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 the black black fruity aromas on the palate. The taste is dry, but very well balanced. And, and the acidity, very nice combined with the flowers of ripe uh, red cherries. Uh, and, and the note of the green capsicum, how I told you, and a little bit spicy uh, type, light body. But um, intensely aromatic, and most important about the our red wines, it's easy to drink and easy to understand. Easy to drink and easy to understand. About the Kadarka, it's, it's not a high body, not a not a, a big wine like Cabernet Sauvignon or Cabernet Franc. 
but very nice typicity, very nice, uh, uh, easy to drink, uh, easy to drink, and 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 uh, about the the um, light light body, very nice acidity, a very nice complexity in uh, uh, aroma, in the in the in the, uh, uh, acidity, and most important about the tanning contents, the tannins, velveting tannins. This is my opinion about this Kadarka. Uh, um, uh, um, I'm so 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 glad uh, because the, a lot of people like this wine, this over red wines, uh, and and uh, I I don't know the original. Uh, some people said uh, the origin is from Albania. The other people uh, said the origin is, is from from Bulgaria. Uh, I think it's our region. Uh, we can obtain very very nice wines. Uh, we can we can uh, the, these varieties can can um, um, find a good condition, good soil and climate condition to obtain a good good uh, good wine. A very nice Kadarka. And uh, a lot of people, how how I told you, like these varieties. Uh, not only in our region, not in in Hungary, not in in the Europe. Uh, I think I think I I uh, send I exported. Uh, this wine in 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 uh, United States, in Canada, in 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 Japan, and uh, the people said, "Geza, excellent wine. Thank you very much." <laughs> taste, it, please. taste it, please. Peace with me. Mm. Are you selling over in Japan? Yes. So yeah, if we want it here, we need to be quick and get it before it all goes to Japan. <laughs> exactly. Or before I drink it all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. We've got, um, Paula said, the spice gives this wine a lot more presence than its alcohol content with jazz. Oh, so. not, not, not too much alcohol, not too much alcohol. About uh, around the 12.5, uh, between uh, 13.5 alcohol, um, acidity, uh, acidity, not more than 5.6, 5.5, and and uh, um, so uh, extract um, uh, 30 grams per liter. How I told you, uh, acidity around the six gram per liter. For me, it's most important to have uh, uh, around uh, and 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 around in wine. It's most important for advance, you know, and everybody know this question. So, um, I, I forgot to, to, to tell something about this wine. Uh, about this, this very nice, very nice... Uh, uh, it's it's a not, not so easy to obtain a good wine from Kadarka. Because uh, most, most difficult uh, uh, varieties, grape varieties, uh, with with more sensibility, uh, if if you have a lot of uh, rain, if uh, we have we have not a good good uh, temperature, but but you have to know you have to know this wine contains a lot of zinc zinc the micro element zinc you know about this question, it's a it's a, a antioxidant, and and uh, how can how can I tell you about the other very very important characteristic. So, I know it's a it's a aphrodisiac wine. <laughs> aphrodisiac. Yes, yes, yes. Because because, because content a lot of zinc. Is zinc you, you can, aphrodisiac? Zinc. Yes, aphrodisiac. You can you can you can try. Really? It. You can try it. This wine is excellent for women. If was drink by men. Everybody has <laughs> to know this question. That's amazing. That's yes. amazing. Yes, uh, yes, yes. So is there... I think I think this is a big reason. This is the most important reason because these wine uh, are preferring uh, uh, for 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 uh, uh, for everybody. Yeah. Wow, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Someone did comment that is a unique selling point indeed. We've not had any wine like that on this webinar before. So thank you very much. Thank uh, you. It's very <laughs> memorable. <laughs> um, my, my, my next question was going to be about the um, kind of the names and the native grape varieties having not only 
like unfamiliar names to us in the UK, but also to um, like, you know, we're talking two different names for the same wine here. Darius, is this a kind of tricky thing to navigate for, you know, overseas markets? No, really. No? No, no, no. It depends you on just your get on with it. <laughs> Not really. I mean, uh, for at least on my account, in my experience with uh, oh, whatever export uh, foreign markets and stuff like that, it's it's we usually have some way to translate it, and it usually sounds well, like Fedasca Niagara, Black Maiden, Fedasca Alba, White Maiden. Uh, there are some trickier. I mean, like um, Emilia said. Uh, Cram pussy. I mean, it's scrim Okay. That so, yeah, so, I was like, I can say that one. Uh, <laughs> okay. Cram okay. is so easy to, to understand it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's, uh, <laughs> exactly. So we have, so, we, so there are some varieties, but you don't need to translate every, everything. I'm, I'm not a very big um, judge. I mean, uh, I don't know, promoter of that. Sometimes I think it's a. Uh, just okay to relate it to something that cre creates or generates an image in someone's mind and so they can just make it something connected to something do you think but, region uh, then is more important to know about than the grape or as yeah important? I, I think region region is very important because as uh, we what we've talked uh, since to this point um, Romania has very old wine regions. I mean, uh, during the Austro-Hungarian Empire, it is some parts of Transylvania and also Palagesa's area was a part of the Vineland of the Empire. Also in the south, uh, during the royal uh, period of uh, Romania, we had uh, grapes that were listed in London as uh, Negro de Dragășan, Black of Dragășan and stuff like that. Um, so we, we have specific terroirs of very old regions. I mean, really old even during Roman periods. I mean, we just found two years ago some amphorae with, uh, um, that were used to stack wines like the soldiers had because this part where I live was uh, the border of the um, uh, Roman Empire. Um, so you do have very specific terroirs, but you know, I mean, this is, you can relate this to almost anything. It depends on the type of the winemaking that you approach. If you go to very um, industrial winemaking, terroir won't be a part of that. I mean, if you have a tank that, that uh, one tank of wine that is uh, one million liters big, you can imagine how many tons of grape you need to fit in to make that tank. So we, we can't talk about region there. You can't, you can talk about, maybe you can do it about the grape variety. But when we talk about small sellers, limited editions, and uh, there I think, and it's, like in any industry, I think. You can talk about terroir, typicity, soil, everything. What makes wine cultural? I mean, you don't want to, you don't want always to drink a cultural wine. Sometimes you just want to fuck it, just feel good and everything and just like that. So you want a good price, something that really will just take some, um, I don't know, something heavy from your mind. But what, as, as, we've, as we've talked, uh, um, wine varieties and um, geographic regions are related. And they're, they're both important, but depends where you put it, in what basket. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it should. <laughs> <laughs> it should. And the, the, um, you said it's difficult to grow the Kadaka. Is it, is it similarly difficult to the Pinot Noir? Because we've got a lot of uh, comments saying they agree that it's um, similar to Pinot Noir. Um, which is notoriously difficult to grow. Is it, is, is it like a similar grape? Yes, uh, not like, not like the Pinot Noir because the condition, the condition, the, the soil and the climate condition, a uh, little bit uh, similar. And, and the type of the wine, Kadarka uh, and, and the Pinot Noir, you know, you know uh, Pinot Noir uh, uh, also uh, must be a light, a very nice body, very nice uh, fruity type of wine. Like, and, and uh, uh, exists a little bit difference between the, the Pinot Noir and the Kadarka taste uh, on, on, on a palate. Uh, uh, Kadarka, who, who uh, I told you, uh, we can observe a little bit spicy type. Uh, uh, in in uh, uh, Pinot Noir, you can observe a, a little bit more, more uh, uh, fruity, 
uh, but uh, uh, about the body, about the, the color, it's, it's a little bit similar. Uh, the, the Pinot Noir is not like Kadarka, also the Kadarka is not like the Pinot Noir. We can, we can talk about the, a little bit similarity. And in the, in the culture, uh, the plants uh, and in the grapes uh, varieties, like a grapes plantation is a little bit uh, um, we can observe a big difference between the, between the, 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 the two grape varieties. But the wines, uh, uh, um, it's, it's similar. Um, so, how I told you, you know, you know, uh, I told you about the Kadarka content, a lot of zinc, a lot of micro element zinc. So, uh, uh, you know, Pinot Noir uh, content a lot of resveratrol. Resveratrol, uh, Procyanidina, it's, it's uh, good for our heart. <laughs> you know we should be country. drinking both. And anti-aging. Excuse me? And anti-aging. Ah, yes. They put it yes. into moisturizer cream. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, you know, between this, you've got good skin, you've got a good heart and a good sex life. This is wonderful. What more could you want from wine? Normal, normal. <laughs> you have to drink, you have to drink only Kadar and Pinot Noir <laughs> <laughs> Even, even, even the next, even the next red wine, uh, Fatesca Negra, Black Middle. Oh, do you want to, do you want to take us on to that one? Yes. I, I, I don't understand it. Do you want to um, talk us through the, the third wine? The third wine? Yeah. Fatesca Negra. Yeah. Uh, so, I want to show you the name, the Hungarian name is Fekatelenko. Romanian name Fetesca Negra and, and uh, Black Maidel. Black Maidel. Uh, also, this is the most popular uh, uh, Romanian red wine. And, and, uh, and um, I think, I think uh, everybody heard. Uh, after my opinion, this is a. This is a um, same to be above use candidate for the flagship varieties of Romania. Um, it is, um, there are um, between um, 14, 15 um, of alcohol. The, the emphasize aroma, emphasize the aroma, the elegant acidity. This wine has a very, very nice velvet, velvet texture. And uh, balanced by the deep, intense aroma of the wine. So, how I told you, this is a Romanian, most popular and historical Romanian grapes varieties. And, uh, and uh, for us, it's most important varieties because if somebody wants to drink uh, one Romanian wines, um, one Romanian on uh, Romanian uh, grape varieties from the Romanian grape varieties, looking for uh, the, the Fetesca Negra. And why Fetesca Negra? So if you win uh, two glasses, you can observe the, the, the color. You can observe one, one, one uh, um, very nice ruby color in, in Fetesca Negra. A little bit deeper than the Kadarka, normal to be to be uh, uh, there, and and a big difference between in arom, uh, aromatical in the nose and and on a palate you can observe a big difference, uh, uh, a little bit more body, uh, a little bit high extract, a little bit more fruity. How how we can we can observe a. Um, bright and ruby red color, uh, subtle on, on the fruity on the nose, and, and most important, uh, these uh, indigenous varieties reflect the characteristics uh, um, of our terrors. I think it's beautiful that velvetiness that it has. And smooth, smooth on the on the palate, with um, intense 
flowers of rye plums and, and uh, uh, fresh uh, red berry fruit combined with uh, velvety tannins and, and hints of, of, of uh, uh, baking spice. Um, and how I told you, this wine is, is a little bit, not a little bit, uh, uh, very, very, very nice and elegance and easy to drink. For me, for me, it's very, very important. Uh, um, the red wines uh, have have been and have to uh, um, this this very important characteristic to be easy to drink, easy to understand. Not not a complexity, not a complex nose, not a complex. Uh, if you have a complex uh, 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 taste on a palate, but must be easy to drink. And I think uh, Fetesca Niagara is there. And and how I told you, we have. Uh, uh, around uh, 14 uh, uh, alcohol. So, but if you have a good balance, you cannot observe the highest, little bit highest alcohol because we have a good balance. We have a good acidity. We have a good uh, extract. And and uh, uh, I don't know what is your opinion, but but uh, the, the alcohol is not too high here. We cannot feel the high alcohol. So about a two, about uh, after the two bottles, and after one bottle, we can feel high alcohol. I know, but but uh, in this moment, if we are tasting this wine, we cannot. Uh, uh, so acidity around the the, the uh, five point three, five point six uh, gram per liter. Residual sugar uh, uh, not more than four uh, gram per liter. So we, we can observe this is uh, uh, we can we can talking about the one one dry uh, red wine. So. Uh, the, the production per hectares, for me, it's most important. Kadarka and Fetesca Niagara, I cannot obtain more than uh, six or seven thousand bottles per hectare. Low quantity, because because in this in this case, I can I can talk about the the quality. If if I if I if I have more than uh, seven eight thousand bottles per hectare in our wine region, the quality is lower. The quality is lower. So, so uh, um, I have here uh, uh, very, very good uh, soil, um, ran and brown clay, and 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 uh, uh, not so deep, not not deeper more than uh, 30, 35, uh, uh, 40 centimeters. And after this, we can observe the 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 stone. High stone. For this question, um, I have uh, uh, one one highest category from these wines. I, I don't know if you heard about my stone wines category. Uh, I have uh, three stone wines category uh, from no. I have one stone wines category from three varieties: Cadar, Cafetesca Negra, and Cabernet Franc. What means the stone wines? I have I have on 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 uh, my lands. Uh, with with uh, more than 450, uh, 500 meter altitude, when when the soil the soil uh, contains a lot of stones, the production is, is very very low, and uh, what means that uh, not more than 4,000 bottles wine per hectare, but the quality are excellent. The name is the, uh, of this category is the, the the stone wine category. So about the Fetesca Negra, the Black Maiden, I think if if somebody somebody like the the the, the uh, like body, uh, very good very good uh, uh, balanced wines, a very nice color, uh, I think I can offer a good Fetesca Negra from my region, from Minis region, and from Balagesa Winery. Well, Ben, you said this is your second best-selling red. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, oh. grown brilliantly. Uh, when George bought it in, um, we we just started pushing customers towards it because one of the big thing uh, we were looking for was a really smooth and silky red because it goes down a charm with uh, UK drinkers. Um, and this hit the nail on the head. Really, it's got all that lovely plush fruit. Um, a big helping of alcohol but it's not noticeable when you drink it because there's so much ripeness in the wine but it's got that smooth finish and for us um it was just kind of fit that gap in the market perfectly 
and it, it does really, really well for us now. Um, so we, we happily sell a lot of it, and if we sell even more, we might bring the stone wines in as well and uh, <laughs> offer something, the next step up and, and show people how good the grape can be. Um, but yeah, it goes very well for us, definitely. But it, like uh, Gazer was saying, it's all about the taste. If you get that spot on, um, and then the packaging is beautiful, the price is exceptionally good, and, and all those sorts of elements come into play as well. You don't have to work too hard to sell it. <laughs> it kind of sells itself after that, really. Yeah, and, and we've been talking about um, the Fateaska Niagara, I can't pronounce it, or I can't even pronounce the uh, Hungarian version. Um, Darius, you're, you're from a different winery, um, Kramajelna, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that your most popular grape, or is there something else that you guys focus on? Or what, tell us a little bit about, um, about that yeah. winery. Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> We have uh, two Romanian varieties. We have uh, Fetiasca Alba White Maiden and Fetiasca Regale, as we said, the Royal Maiden. Then I have a Sauvignon Blanc, a Muscat Tonel, and a Pinot Noir. So we're very big, and I'm very big on Pinot Noir. I mean, it's one of my favorite uh, grape varieties. So, um, yeah. And uh, we have the whole uh, plantation is around uh, 26 hectares. We produce around 85,000 bottles per year, so yeah, not that much. And um, it's a again, the area is very, very like it's like inside, it's a very renowned wine region. But again, the, the time will be too short to tell you about that. It's a huge, lovely gem. Just I don't know, just enter Facebook or our site or whatever, like that. You'll find even we've made a movie about it, and uh, you can see what the terroir means. I mean, I have a very sustainable approach when it comes to winemaking and uh, vineyard management. Um, I don't go mad on uh, biological, biodynamic. I've made biological and biodynamic, and with Nico, I made the kosher wine also. So, so, so we've, so we've, so we've played a lot with wines, and uh, I think you should have a very open and straight uh, communication, and just don't hide like most winemakers do behind the bars. You don't do really nothing bad there, especially when you when you have a good work ethic. Let's put it like that way, and yeah, you do. You just have to keep it sustainable. Like, to be able to repeat that forever and because yeah so that's what i think about this and uh, that's how we've been uh, promoting ourselves and i really make like each wine like it's three thousand five seven thousand bottles per edition so it really represents a very small plot from the vineyard and i keep a like a holy typicity on it it's we have very high acidity very low ph very fruity exuberant fresh vibrant wines especially on whites and rosés. And the Pinot just gets, I mean, Jelna uh, actually, our vineyard is located like six minutes away from Romane Conti, as you put it on the parallel. So it's a very, very, very close, related as a climate goes as to, to, to exactly that part of, uh, uh, point of Burgundy. So I can make really, really awesome Pinot here. Like I get it. Region, sorry, did you say um, Crema Jelna was in? Uh, Lekinza, it's Transylvania. It's the heart of Transylvania, actually. Here, right in the, okay. Yeah, so it's right. uh, it used to be, yeah, as I said, part of the violin of the old empire. Put it like that. Darius, yeah. Darius, yeah. I think you know you know about the 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 uh, very very important and very nice grape writers from Lekinza. The name is Nyburger the Lekinza. Of course, of course, of course. Yes, it's a it's a most popular and most most important. Uh, 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 grape varieties, white grape varieties. Unfortunately, you cannot you cannot find these varieties because it's a, it's a not it's a complex and not so easy to to to, yeah, to grow in this these varieties. And uh, unfortunately, we can observe and we can find these varieties not more than several hectares in La Quince in the in the in their exactly. parts. Exactly. Exactly. So sorry. I'm so There's sorry. There's time. Because, There's time yes. to replant it and to make it. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes, but it's, it's a very good variety. I, I can yes. agree with you. And I really want to work with you. It, but <laughs> it will take some time, I think. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's what we have around here. I also have a little Cabernet and some um, Merlot that I uh, take from a, a very old vineyard nearby, uh, exactly from the same area. Like, but it's, again, under a hectare. So I use that uh, amazing, amazing, amazing um, 
like a pool of very good uh, grapes and local and pretty old because our um, um, plantation is quite new, 10 years. So we're not, uh, so whatever I can find that really fits my profile and that people let me play with it and to go my way as, a, as a philosophy goes, I'm happy. And we, as I've said, people are really, really, really enthusiastic about the wines. I mean, we really went very well with them. And uh, as Amelia said regarding the states, we have a very good demand from uh, uh, for uh, Rhode Island. Mm. Uh, and we had a scheduled meeting on uh, exactly in April. So as you can, as you know it. <laughs> <didn't> happen. Happen. <laughs> but uh, the wines got there and we had a really amazing review in a uh, blind tasting so it's one of my hey. so blancs yeah I, I don't know if you've heard of uh, mark blight excuse me, excuse me, Darius. Yes. Excuse me Darius. Yeah. i think i think uh, i think uh, our opinion um, opinions are, are, are the same because uh, um, when when we are talking about the romanian uh, wines uh, on the, the international markets, I think we have uh, one chance with our very popular uh, domestic varieties like Kadarka, like Fetesca Negra, like uh, 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 Fetesca Regale, Royal Maiden, uh, Black Maiden, yeah. because yeah. everybody everybody know uh, the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, everybody know Pinot Noir, everybody know uh, Merlot. And and uh, no, uh, normal because because uh, because they they can uh, they can find in the France in the Spain yeah, yeah Italy. So we have good condition for these varieties. That for for us most important, very very important, we have our our domestical our typical varieties because we have we have a typical soil we have typical uh, uh, climate condition for our typical varieties like Kadarka, like Fatesca Negra, yeah, like Fatesca Regale. I, I agree. And, and for, for Romanian winemakers chance, it's unique chance, these varieties. Yeah, I completely agree. But I also think that I can do it better than them at some point. So <laughs> I'll take my chance on that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Let me let me have some some bold youthfulness in me. Okay, I'm a great. <laughs> you know that. Good. Yeah. So good, yeah, I think we had a <laughs> good one on this. Soma. I love the passion. I love yeah. the passion. Yeah. 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 Just, yeah. Something else. I mean, it's <laughs> listening to the way that you're talking about how you want to try this and you want to do that and you want to explore this and then, you know, absolutely, guys, are having that point of difference with different, you know, unique grape varieties that are delicious. Um, and being able to put that onto the market, I definitely think that's something special. Yeah, I mean, Thank you. And yeah. does climate we're, 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 change, has climate change affected any of the grapes or how you plant the vineyards? Uh, at least for me, I, I can see that, well, we have a very cold region. I mean, uh, the grapes that I have are actually in a pretty, uh, it's in an area that's considered a mountain area. So it's really, really cold. I mean, we got, we got very good points on all competitions regarding cold climate. Right, um, right. But I start to get very, very good ripeness, ripeness on, um, on red grape varieties, including Fetiasca Niagara at, uh, at a different cellar. So I'm starting to see a very good point uh, where acidity, pH, uh, tannin, polyphenols, um, um, sugar, and really good maturation of the grape. They, they kind of meet. They, they meet a lot better than they used to meet before. Mm. And I also uh, get, I think for Transylvania, climate change at this point has done better than worse. Let's just put it that way. Wow. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yes, I'm agree. I'm agree because everybody know if somebody want to drink one good wine, good white wine from Romania, uh, I, think, I think everybody uh, know about the white wines from Transylvania. From from uh, from Lakenza and uh, from Ternava region uh, in the middle of Transylvania because there are a, a very very nice condition very nice climate condition and and you know about the the, the uh, um, white varieties uh, white grape varieties need uh, uh, before to be harvested I need a little bit a little bit uh, uh, a low temperature in the night and high temperature on the day. It's most important and in our region uh, you can observe we can observe and we can have this this condition for white varieties 
like uh, uh, Gallen, like uh, the other typical typical uh, grape varieties like Tamayasa Romanesca, like how I how you told about the, the Sauvignon Blanc and how you told the Fatesca Alba and the other domestical and very very important local varieties. Yeah. Agree. Toma? <laughs> it's like mother. <laughs> Our mothers. <laughs> Mother of dragons. <laughs> and Ben, you've you've got um you've got quite a variety of different grapes, different styles, yeah. different countries. And it's I guess it's it must be that uniqueness that people are searching for. Well, we, we just um, started a company that excited us, really. We, we were w wine drinkers, and the thing that excited us was tasting things that you couldn't really find um, because they were, all, they were all different, but they were different and still a bit familiar. And I think what one of the key things we've done with Novel Wines and probably why it's been so successful as it has is because... We like being playful and experimenting and bringing in lots of interesting wines. We want them to be different and characterful and show off the culture and the terroir and the stories and everything else. But they've also got to be wines that on the palate people are vaguely familiar with. They have to have a stronghold in um, you know, the taste that, that we're used to. So we don't have many um, sweet red wines and things like that for example because they don't fly off the shelves in the uk so um we have picked for the market but the most important thing all the time is if it tastes great and it's got a good story then we're pretty excited to bring it in and if george and i and the team are all raving about this new wine that we've brought in um as long as a few people buy it and a few people start talking about it it's not long before lots of people will start buying and talking about it so um yeah it just comes down from that kind of curiosity but also that excitement as well as long as you're not going too far away from what people drink then you, you can have a lot of fun and success with it as well yeah so would you sell the sorry sorry no i was, I was just i was actually just going to ask you amelia because i when i'm trying new wines i'll often um if I find a producer, like I find a wine I like, I'll then try other wines from that producer because I feel that if they've got the same taste as me, that then they'll have the same taste as me on their other wines as well. I mean, is that, do you agree? Are there other tips? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I do say that, like, particularly like when I used to like write for Waitrose and things and people would be like, oh my goodness, I'm faced with the supermarket aisles, what do I buy? And I do say, well, you know, if you if you do like the producer and you're willing to spend X amount, then definitely. Or if you know that you like, a, you've, you'd really like a wine from a region and you know you could hone in on the grape and be like, oh, I liked that grape from that region. I wonder if I can find another producer working with that grape from the same region. Um, you know, I think that also, you know, that's quite interesting to do as well. Um, so yeah, you could go with producer, you could go with grape. Um, and I mean, I also really liked in the supermarkets, that's why I was going to ask Ben, I mean, what, when they have like buyer's choice in Waitrose and when they say, you know, if you like X, like if you like Pinot, if you like this, I mean, is that how you would have to probably hand sell some of these wines, Ben, or like over the phone or whatever? Yeah, we, we, we do a lot of, uh, what, what do you normally like to drink? And, and as soon as they come off that. Uh, we can yeah. point people in the right direction. Usually we use that for the first time customers. The, the kind of golden customers, if you like, are the ones that end up having pretty much the same palette as you because then you can point them at <laughs> anything on your list yeah. and <laughs> they'll probably like it. Um, but, yeah, for most people, if they, if they know what they like um, and they know what they want to spend, any good wine merchant, whether it's us or anyone else in, in the UK or US or whatever, if you find a good indie wine merchant whose taste um, you trust and you just tell them what you like and how much you want to spend, you're probably going to get a pretty good bottle of wine. So, um, yeah, I think it's more important than ever to shop with your indies and, and support them because uh, you'll probably drink a lot better afterwards. And you get more for your buck, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Have, yeah. You, have you found that tough with lockdown? 
have you found that tough with lockdown because you can't you haven't been able to do as much hand selling people are just going on the website and buying stuff uh yeah it was this twofold really we haven't got the same tasting presence we were doing you know 200 to 300 events a year before lockdown so that's ground to an absolute halt really <laughs> um but the uh a lot of people still phone in we get lots of emails asking us um for recommendations if people don't want to bother talking to us we've got buyers selection cases on the website and then we'll just build it for them um and then yeah then the other thing is it's just been quite nice with new customers in lockdown who are I don't know, curious, bored, interested, whatever, um, who stumble across us and, and give us a go. And because we've always bought wines with quality is the very, very first thing. Um, and most of our wines are 10 to 20 quid, so you don't have to spend an absolute fortune to try these unusual grapes and things. Um, as long as the quality is excellent, then when they've given us a go, we've got a very high return rate um for the follow-up purchases because they take one risk and we we please them i've always said to um uh other people who ask us uh the problem with hungarian wine romanian wine etc with a uk audience is if you mess up the first time they drink it they won't they come, back. come back but yeah this is not like french wine where they go and try another french wine if you give someone hungarian romanian bulgarian wine for the first time and it's no good you've lost their kind of risk um to go and taste it so it's hugely important for all wine importers to bring in the, the best they can find because uh it's what makes these regions succeed and, and do really well responsibilities on you <laughs> yeah. oh, man. Good so man i forget to tell something if it's possible to tell you uh, yeah about the about the the one other other uh, our most most uh, popular and most important activity uh and you can observe on our uh, website uh, about the 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 um uh wine tourist if you know because the people the people uh, like uh, very 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 uh much so much this activity because uh, we have a very nice pension in our winery and a lot of people uh, visit us if, if uh, somebody want to to know this question uh, they can observe uh, on our our uh, uh, website uh, it's it's a most most uh, uh, important activity in in, in uh, our wine uh, uh, wine yards in, in in our winery because a lot of people visit us and and uh, they can know about us about our our wine about our technology they can they can uh, taste our wines and also we have a very nice kitchen for our wines and very nice kitchen for uh, for our region the people can observe can know about this question on our website and so uh, i have uh, the possibility to invite you to visit us to visit our winery I invite to uh, to everybody to visit us, and 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 uh, we have a very nice, uh, great chicken. <laughs> and, and, and for goulash. Amalia and for everybody. And goulash. <laughs> and goulash, very nice goulash, uh, uh, um, fish uh, sub goulash, and and uh, pork goulash, uh, and, and the other other type. <laughs> Love goulash. Love goulash. We do. <laughs> yeah, I'm you're definitely. You're welcome. It. It's on the list. So yeah, everyone, um, you're welcome to go and uh, visit the wineries. Just saying that he's got somewhere for you to stay. Restaurant, beautiful vineyards, um, worth a visit. I'm guessing it's kind of a long weekend trip to do it. Um, but yeah, it sounds sounds good to me. Um, if anyone's got any more questions, pop them in. Just as I do a little intro to what we're going to be talking about next week, because. We'll We'll be closing this shortly. Um, so next week, so starting on Saturday, so this coming weekend and then all next week and next weekend is English Wine Week. So if you're on social media, you'll see a lot of chatter about English Wine Week. Please do support your local vineyards um, and, you know, 
all around all around the UK and um, because it's you know they they're really building up um, great name for themselves and developing some amazing wines so please do um, go and seek those out next week and be part of it and um, we are teaming up with Stanlake Park um, Natalia and Nico amazing couple have come in recently and are transforming Stanlake Park both their wines and the image of the winery so you know it's going to be really uh, fun to talk to them about their wines we've got three of my favorite wines um, of theirs that uh, we're going to be going through one's a Bacchus so we mentioned that earlier so if you like Sauvignon Blanc Bacchus is a fantastic alternative um, we, we're um, looking at their King's Fumé which is like a white burgundy alternative and then the Grand Reserve which I liken to a northern Italian red but Nico who's Italian may disagree with me but um, we shall see during the conversation then the following week um, we have Wines Unpacked uh, my internet's unstable, but hopefully I'm still around. Uh, we've got Wines Unpacked, where we're looking at box wine, cans wine. Um, we've got uh, wine in magnums in half bottles. Um, so we're, we're going to be talking about that slightly different uh, format for that um, session. And then we're going to be get flying over to Germany for Oliver Zeta wines, which I'm a big fan of. Um, so yeah, so please do uh, sign up to those if you want to join us. All right, are there any more questions coming in? Anything else? Uh, just getting a lot of praise. Loved all three wines tonight. Absolutely delicious from Alan. So fantastic. Yeah, thank you all very much. Thanks. And then um, thank you, Gaza. It's been wonderful hearing about your winery, Darius. It's been thank you very much. I'm so and Ben, thank you. About thank you, Ben. You. Thank you, Ben, Darius, thank Amelian, you. and then so much. Thank you, guys. That was thank awesome. you very much. Thank you, thank you much. Thanks, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.